Welcome back to the conversation. It's Adrian Lawrence, and this time I have a senior correspondent for Insider. That's Aki Ito. Thanks for joining us, Aki. Hi, thanks so much for having me. Yeah, so I know there's been a lot of talk on social media right now, also the Wall Street Journal, using this term quiet quitting as a phenomenon, really to explain how people are unwilling to do more than they're supposed to do at work. Yet, I think back in the day, I would say, what earlier this year, maybe May, it almost seems like you wrote a full article on this before the term was coined. Um, you know, am I wrong in this? Yeah, so when I started hearing the term quiet quitting um, and what it actually describes, I thought it sounded pretty familiar too. Um, it turned out that my story had actually inspired the meme on TikTok. There was a career coach named Brian Creeley who was riffing on my story and he came up with the term quiet quit. Uh, and from there it just kind of took off and became this viral sensation. Yeah, for real, because it's like I, I I know for the last few weeks, I get the Wall Street Journal. And then I see your story in the great rethink of the pandemic. Millions of Americans have essentially resolved to make work less central in their lives. That's something that you said and you wrote in your article. And I'm like, this is the originator as far as I'm concerned of quiet quitting. Well, it's not every day that as a reporter, you get to kind of kickstart this national conversation. So it's been very exciting to you know watch everybody debate this. Absolutely, and I'm so glad to be able to have this conversation with you because um, I know you put in the work and you identify the issue. And so when it really comes to this issue of people making work less central to their lives, how is it playing out? Because I know we are mm, a little bit out of the whole quarantine pandemic phase that we were in back in 2020 that really made people rethink their interactions with their workplace. And so are you still seeing this continue to play out with people decentralizing work when it comes to their lives? I really do think we're continuing to see this. I think you're exactly right that in 2020, people had this realization that they want to make work less central in their lives. Um, but that was kind of the first step, you know, that was the thing that killed hustle culture. Um, what I wanted to figure out was what were people doing with that resolution to actually work less, um, which is where my story came in. I interviewed all these people who are working a lot less than they used to. Some, you know, maybe they were going from 60 hours a week to 40 hours a week, which is exactly the amount you're supposed to work, but some were cutting it down even further to 30 or you know 10 or five hours a week. Um, so it's really interesting people experimenting with this whole new way of working that they hadn't been experimenting with before and seeing if they had success with that. Yeah, and I think it's a powerful thing. Uh, at least from my experience with the pandemic, I think that whole shift of having people recognize that uh, there are things really important in life and keeping your own life, making sure you're healthy and safe and your loved ones are, spending time with them. I think people really kind of maybe had a realization of their own mortality. And then they realized that why should I invest so much time and energy in somebody who won't even give me two weeks before they fire me. And so I really think it's a very healthy and a good thing of people seeking more out of their lives. Do you think that this shift is something that is going to really change the fabric of our workforce? Or do you think that this is kind of just a, a little blurb on the a few years back in the early mid 2000s? I think if you asked me that question even uh, a year and a half ago, um, relatively early in the pandemic, I think I would have said, I think I would have been more cynical. I think I would have said this is just a temporary pandemic thing. People are going to forget about this and go back to normal. But I think the fact that we're having this big conversation about quiet quitting right now, um, earlier uh, last year we were talking about anti-work, the viral Reddit subreddit. We were talking about the great resignation. People want to keep talking about how to work differently, which is another way of talking about how to live differently. And I think that really goes to show that people are, are eager to kind of learn what they uh, learned during the pandemic in this permanent way and, and try to find a new way forward. Absolutely, and I think it's a really powerful thing and an important thing because uh, something we did learn definitely uh, during that time of quarantine around the start of the pandemic with the murder of George Floyd and whatnot is that we don't have to take it that nobody has to endure this feeling of being oppressed, that your job is not necessarily going to be there for you, but hopefully your loved ones or the life you've built will be there for you. It feels like almost a model that a lot of the European countries have invested in, in terms of identifying who they are as people, as being individuals and less of being employees. 
And also one thing that I seem to notice is definitely the upshot of this pandemic and part of this whole revolutionary change in workforce is a rise in unionization. Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, I think a lot of this broader conversation that we're having right now, um, it's really about the relationship between the employer and the employee. Before, you know, as the employee, we were willing to give everything to our employer. That's no longer the case anymore. Um, that's why people have been so willing to switch jobs, you know, to get a, a, a better title or maybe you know get a bigger raise. Um, they've also been willing to unionize to to you know be able to have a voice in their workplace. I think all of these trends point to this, uh, this this central trend that we're seeing, which is that the employer-employee relationship is changing. The employee actually wants to kind of take back more of the power that they had previously given to the employer. Yeah, and also I would actually argue that this is also a culmination of the rise in social media, where everybody has a voice and can be vocal. And when we have a lot of employers out there claiming to respect workers, to treat them right, no, we had me too. People speaking up about what was going on in their workplace and in their professional lives, as well as their personal lives. And then we had the things during the pandemic where people are speaking up, people coming out against companies who are still portraying things that are oppressive to black people, for example, with Aunt Jemima, Uncle Ben, and so on and so forth. You have a reckoning and accountability with the uh, the leaders of our capitalistic front, these businesses. And so it definitely seems that people are continuing to push in that direction because they're recognizing their worth. I think that's exactly right. And uh, for example, quiet quitting is a TikTok meme. It was trending on Twitter for months before it reached the mainstream, uh, you know, in the Wall Street Journal, for example. Um, so yeah, definitely social media is a huge force. Yeah, without a doubt. And and I think it's, it's such a powerful thing because it does give individuals their own megaphone and their own microphone to do with it as they please. To speak about things that are going on behind closed doors at companies, to push back, to show that your whole DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion mantra is not how you're actually practicing. Um, so I think a lot of companies realize that they are going to be held accountable, that they can't continue to use and abuse people, but they actually have to start respecting workers. Uh, but I, at the same time, I'm wondering how could this end up playing out? Do you think it could possibly shift back in terms of the pendulum? Or do you think this is something that is truly just, uh, it is enlightening and it will move forward to shape our future? Well, I think the interesting thing is we are starting to see some signs of a slowdown in the job market. So if we were to get into a recession, for example, the employer employee dynamic could really change um, in a way that's not favorable to employees anymore. That said, uh, once again, the fact that we're having these really big conversations about how to work differently, how to live differently, um, I think that's a sign that people want this to be an enduring phenomenon. They want something permanent to come out of this. And as long as there's that collective will, I think I'm, I'm hopeful certainly that we'll see real change um, endure in the years ahead. Yeah, and I think there needs to be change uh, overall for the betterment of our our entire GDP, how we do business. Uh, burning through workers is not the way in which that we will continue to advance the United States because it definitely seems to be somewhat stagnant in part because of capitalistic greed. Um, and so we're gonna have to see how that plays out. But in terms of what you're working on for Insider, uh, you wanna give us a hint about anything coming down the pike? Uh, well, certainly I'm continuing to follow this quiet quitting phenomenon. I'm just so interested in how people are responding to this. You know, first came the, the story about it, then came the backlash. Now there's the backlash against the backlash. Uh, I just think it's so exciting that people are debating this in, in a way that uh, is, is fundamental and very deep. Um, so I'll certainly continue to report on that. Um, I'm, I'm also really interested in the where the economy is going in the months ahead. Um, if we're going to head into a recession, um, inflation, just so many exciting things going on right now. Absolutely, it definitely seems like we are in a place where we're trying to figure out where we are going as a nation, particularly when it comes to businesses, capital and whatnot. And I know with the midterms coming up, I'm sure there is a lot of buzz about that and potential change. Are you hearing that? 
yeah, I, I think um, the the midterms will certainly play a huge role in this. Um, it, we'll we'll see if you know young voters, young Democratic voters, will rise up and really start to press for change in a way that's systematic, in a way that uh, leads to real legislation. Um, certainly, we can talk about this all we want on on YouTube and on you know social media and whatnot. Uh, but it's another thing to actually get real laws that will stay there forever. Absolutely, yep, and definitely listening to the people, seeing where they wanna go. Because as we know right now, given the reversal of Roe v. Wade, there are a lot of women signing up, registering to vote. And I know they're gonna make their voices known by choosing hopefully members of parties that will reflect their choices. And hopefully with that will come some kind of significant meaningful change across the board. I think we could all use it. And so for those out there who want to follow you and follow your work, where can they go? Sure, they can go to businessinsider.com. Um, they can also follow me on Twitter. My handle's at Aki Ito7. Um, yeah, I think those are the two ways to follow my stories. Excellent, thank you so much for joining us and thank you for your work. That's Aki Ito, senior correspondent for Insider. Thanks for having me.